Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna. I'm a classical violinist and I also make lifestyle content here on YouTube. And today I wanted to share an update, I guess, on my skincare routine and what I've been using for the last few months. And particularly sharing my experience, I guess, about using tretinoin for the first time. So I'll talk a little bit about this product specifically, the sort of active ingredient specifically, how my skin has handled introducing it, some of the things that I did to kind of help that transition as well as like other products that I just really like at the moment or have been using in case some of you have been interested. It's been a long time since I've done like a dedicated skincare video. Little disclaimer though before we get into it of course I am a doctor of music not a doctor of skin <laughs> so I am not a dermatologist in any way. So any information that I share today and like my experience and such is very much anecdotal. It is 100% just my opinion and my experience. I will leave some resources below from some actual skincare specialists that you might find useful as well and things that I used in my sort of research to getting into tretinoin. So I believe that tretinoin is known medically as Retin-A which is like a prescription retinoid at least in New Zealand you have to have a prescription to get it you can't just walk into a pharmacy and by tretinoin over the counter. And a retinoid is a form of vitamin A that is either applied topically, and sometimes it's ingested I think as well via oral medication, things like Accutane contain the same kind of ingredient. And basically retinoids were developed to help treat acne, um, but they've also kind of discovered since then that it can be really useful for anti-aging as well. So a lot of people, even if they don't suffer from acne, might still wanna use a retinoid for like anti-aging purposes. Retinoids can help to stimulate cell turnover and can also help to regulate your sebum, sebum. <laughs> make sure I get that word right, sebum production in your skin so it can also help in that way at reducing acne over time. When I first started hearing about like retinoids and stuff in skincare when I was really getting into it like a few years ago, the word that was thrown around a lot at that time was retinol and that is a style of a retinoid that is found in over-the-counter products. You can just go to like any drugstore or you know Mecca and pick up products that have retinol in it but that is different to the kind of prescription retinoid that you can get from your doctor, which are generally a bit stronger. So before we jump into why I decided to get on to Tret, I'll talk a little bit about my skincare journey. So ever since I started turning into a woman in my puberty years, I started to develop quite oily skin. I've always had more oily skin. Sometimes it can be a bit combo-y. It has normalized at times throughout my life, but kind of most of the time it's been more oily and acne prone. I've never suffered from severe acne. I've always had what I would consider more mild it's never been to the point where it severely inhibits on my confidence or my ability to like you know do life especially with some good makeup which is what I'm wearing obviously on my skin today BB cream and concealer I will show you some pictures of my skin without cosmetics on so I've always felt like I've been able to manage my breakouts even though I've had them pretty consistently for so many years the one thing that I've always found kind of sad though is I don't feel confident enough to not wear makeup like even to film this video i should probably be sitting here with a bare face you can see it fully the whole time but i just was like mm, i don't want to do that even though i show my bare face on here all the time like I always start a makeup video bare faced but i don't know blame the patriarchy but i would love to be in a position where i could just walk out the door be completely bare faced and feel great about myself like that would be awesome and maybe I'll get there anyway just in my own confidence I'm certainly getting more and more confident as I get older but for now I still feel like I need to at least just use like a little bit of concealer on spots because I'm just not 100% at that point where I could like go to work you know working in the orchestra without like something to cover them up it's just it's just where I'm at emotionally and inside basically I am 30 now so I've been suffering with what I would call mildly problematic skin for about 16 years or so it was probably around about 14 when things started to get kind of uh, maybe even a bit earlier but I kind of persisted with it through my teenage years thinking oh, I was just just teenage skin it got a little bit better I think in my early 20s and then I noticed it to start to decline a little bit as I got really stressed in my studies doing like my masters and my PhD and such I think that really wrecked havoc on my skin I didn't treat my body well at all I'd push it well beyond what was healthy for my stress levels and I don't think that helped the situation. Also when my channel was younger and it was far more like 90% like beauty focused, I was trying so many new products all the time, trying new skincare things all the time, new makeup products and I was just sort of 
putting my skin through a lot so I feel like that didn't help either. About two years ago I went to my doctor in Australia and asked for some tretinoin. I tried almost every other kind of treatment to help my skin. I definitely saw a bit of an improvement with things like salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide and whatnot. They definitely helped but it wasn't a miracle cure. I still would get these breakouts you know and it was just I wanted something that would make my skin clear. And obviously I'd heard a lot of people saying that retinoids are really just the gold standard in acne treatment and just helping to make your skin look amazing. And I was like, okay, I really wanna get that. So I went to my doctor and asked for it, but she was very hesitant to put me on it. I suspect now that it's possibly because I'm, I guess, of a typical childbearing age. Like I'm 30 now, and so then I was 28. She probably thought, oh, I don't wanna put her on that because you don't wanna be using a retinoid during pregnancy or if you're like trying to get pregnant or breastfeeding I think possibly as well so I suspect maybe that was why she was a bit hesitant to put me on or maybe she just thought we could try something else first before going there so she put me on a topical antibiotic and I tell you what that actually worked it really did work my skin got really clear for about nine months or so or six months maybe six to nine months my skin just was so clear I'd hardly ever get a breakout and I was like yes like it was just amazing to have that confidence and obviously if I wasn't getting as many breakouts the scars and the pigmentation that I caused from the breakouts started to heal a lot as well it was a real confidence boost um, the problem was this is going to get real TMI but I think it's so important to share because I haven't heard anyone talk about this it could be like coincidence rather than causation is that correlation rather than causation? But while I was on this topical antibiotic, I experienced about four months straight of just chronic thrush infections down below that would not go away. Like I would try the treatment, it would maybe get a little bit better and then it would come back again. And I was just like, what the heck? Cause I, my whole life, I've never been someone that suffered with thrush infections. Maybe I had like one in my life before then. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it just kept coming back. And I was like, the only thing I've changed in my life is that I'm on this topical antibiotic. What a lot of people find is when they go on a course of like oral antibiotics, say for um, an infection, like an ear infection or something, they'll often get a thrush infection after. And I'm pretty sure the thrush infection I had earlier in my life was after like a course of antibiotics. So I kind of put it down to the fact that I was using this topical antibiotic on my skin every day for like months on end and it was probably messing with my microbiome in general and just allowing the perfect storm really for a thrush infection to thrive and so I just decided in the end to go off it it wasn't worth having good skin to be persisting with these infections and literally as soon as I stopped using the topical antibiotic I no longer was dealing with thrush infections and haven't had a single one since so Obviously this is not a clinical trial or anything, it could have just been complete coincidence, but this was my experience and so I kind of wanted to put it out there in case someone else is dealing with a similar kind of thing. So my skin actually did though stay quite clear for a little while after stopping, like a few months, but then the breakout slowly started to sort of come back and I was just like, no. <laughs> so in December of last year, I went to my doctor here for the first time in New Zealand and was like, please can I try tretinoin? I talked to her about my experience with the topical antibiotic and how it worked, but obviously isn't something I want to be on for a long time. Because I also do worry a little bit about antibiotic resistance, which is like a real thing. So I was like, I don't like being on antibiotics for a long time. So she gave me a prescription for the Retrieve Cream Tretinoin. This is 0.05%. So this is like a moderately strength tretinoin. You can start, I think, on 0.025% if you've got a little bit more drier, sensitive skin. My skin, as I say, being quite oily, was probably more likely to cope with this fine. But this is actually not the first tube that I got. It's the sweet one, <laughs> which I've already gone through. So I've been on this for about three and a half months now. So I've gone through a full tube and we are on to my second one. Now, my experience with tretinoin. A lot of people, when they go on a retinoid or a retinol, experience a lot of side effects of like dryness, flaking skin, peeling very irritated skin. Dr. Sam Bunting here on YouTube has made some really amazing retinol, retinoid kind of videos. And so I followed a lot of what she suggested for kind of introducing it. I feel very lucky to have experienced basically no dryness, flaking, peeling, nothing on my skin, apart from my lips, because even though I didn't like directly apply retinol to my lips, if I'm applying it around where I really need it, which is like the chin area, there is going to be a little bit of sort of bleeding, I guess, of the active ingredient into areas that you might not have applied it. So I did notice quite a bit of dryness on my top lip here and my bottom lip here after a while too. But so where I may have been very lucky to not have experienced severe dryness and irritability kind of 
symptoms I definitely experienced a purge because I probably have that more like oily acne prone skin as soon as I started using rationale after about a month or so my skin really started to get a lot worse than where I started and three and a half months in and I'm still dealing with the purge I feel in fact it's going into places that I didn't even use to get breakouts like my forehead and temples like I'd get the odd one up there but I've been getting like a lot more so that's really disappointing but something that I've also done a lot of research on and is quite normal um, maybe not so normal to be this long but I'm just hoping that after sort of six months things will start to settle down so right now I can't say that tretinoin has helped my acne at all it's kind of made it worse but I'm hoping that in my next update I hope to do another update in like three months I can hopefully be like yay my skin is breakout free I have noticed though quite a difference in sort of the glow and luminosity in my skin so while I might be breaking out a lot and such I definitely feel like I wake up the next morning after using it and my skin just does have a bit more of a youthful glow. So I'm definitely starting to see some of the sort of anti-aging effects. My skin seems a little bouncier. So there's definitely been some good pros in that regard. I'm just hoping that it will fix the acne at some stage. So in terms of how I used it, um, when I first got my first tube, I was pretty terrified of it. I was thinking I'd use it and wake up the next morning, my skin would be peeling off like a lizard. But um, I went quite slowly. I used like maybe half a pea sized amount, like about half the dose of what you'd normally use. And I applied it only every sort of third night. So about twice a week or so for two to three weeks. And I would buffer it with a moisturizer, but not in the sense of like layering the moisturizer underneath. I would just apply this and then about a minute later, I'd go straight in with a moisturizer. So I went quite tentatively. And after a few weeks, I was like, my skin looks no different and doesn't feel any drier and there was like literally no symptoms it was, it was it was as if I hadn't even started using this so I thought okay I think I can go up to every second night so I went to every second night for about two weeks and again skin didn't feel irritated dry or anything by that stage I was starting to see a little bit of purging come through so then I moved up to every night and again my skin coped with that fine it didn't get any drier but I definitely started to see quite an increase in the purging at that stage and ever since I've been using it every night so about a pea-sized amount now so I do feel very thankful that I've been able to introduce it with no major issues in that regard I'm just really hoping that in a few months my skin will be really clear that would be amazing I just thought it was nice to add my voice to the mix of being like a 30 year old with oily acne prone skin that is going on tretinoin for that reason and not for anti-aging necessarily like that's a perk that I'm excited about but a lot of the videos made by people in their 30s going on tret I feel like is all targeted towards anti-aging and maybe they've got dry skin so they have to do a lot of things to kind of counteract that and they're not maybe experiencing the purging that I am. So let's quickly talk about some of the products that I used over the last few months. In terms of cleansers, makeup removers for a start, I guess I use like a makeup removing washcloth kind of style thing. I've actually gone off the little face halos because I found they started to get a little bit rough over time. If you've used them too many times and washed them too many times, they do start to lose that softness and I felt like I didn't want to irritate my skin with any sort of physical exfoliant through that time and then I'll go on with a proper cleanser and the one that I was using most of the time that I really do love it's just not cruelty free so I can't really repurchase it anymore because I do want to try my very best to go as cruelty free as possible anyway this is the Neutrogena Extra Gentle Cleanser it's fragrance free it's a non-foaming cleanser it's quite like sort of similar to the CeraVe hydrating cleanser which we can't buy in stores here in New Zealand we'd have to order it online this I can get in my local supermarket so it's so easy and it's affordable and it's gentle and I found it really nice to use I've been using it for years even before retinoids um, but yeah I just have to try and find like a good cruelty free dupe for this if you know of one I'd love to find out I've recently been using this one from yes style it's a cleansing mousse from the brand aromatica the name cleansing mousse is very accurate it's not like a cleansing foam that you kind of get from Western brands this is like lush thick almost like shaving cream like it's really plush I find it quite gentle even though most people would probably avoid a foaming cleanser during retinol use I find at night after I've like used my makeup removing cloth I find this fine maybe it's because I have oily skin so my skin can tolerate it but yeah I really do like it I would use the Neutrogena one a little bit more in the mornings it's like a really nice morning kind of cleanse also I've kept my skincare routine really really pared back over the last bit while I've taken out pretty much all active so I don't have any chemical exfoliants 
no no benzoyl peroxide products like literally just nothing apart from just like cleansing and hydrating and then sunscreen because i just wanted to let the retinoid just like do its thing uninhibited and just in case using too many actives was going to like be too much for my skin so i just paired it right back so in the mornings i would just go in with a gel based kind of moisturizer i am still working my way through my stash of Huda Labo hyaluronic acid creams these are really lovely gel based moisturizers but again Huda Labo is not cruelty free so i'm probably not going to repurchase this one and then for sunscreen it's been kind of the same story I'm trying to use up my stash of non cruelty free ones even though this is my favorite sunscreen of all time the can make mermaid skin gel this is a couple of bottles i go through the stuff very fast it's spf 50 it's got a beautiful gel based kind of consistency that sits so nicely under makeup so that's why i love it it's also fragrance free but yeah it's not cruelty free damn so i have ordered some new sunscreens to try out again i'll update you guys on those in the next video hopefully we will have found one that comes even close to that and of course i'm waiting with bated breath for purito to re-release their sunscreens because they also were some of my all-time favorite formulations and then at night time once i've cleansed my face and such and let my skin dry i will go in with the tretinoin then so that's when i apply my cream and i use dr sam bunting's method of like i think she called it like the 13 point method or something like that but there's like a certain strategic way you apply it around your face so that you're not like overloading a certain section with lots of the active ingredient and missing other spots and then my next step is moisturizers which i've been using this one from purito for the last few months because of course i was a bit worried about my skin getting like super dry and flaky so i decided to get a kind of more intense night cream than I was using that has some really good like skin barrier repairing ingredients. So this is the Purito Centella Unscented Recovery Cream and it's full of really beautiful nourishing ingredients, emollients and occlusive ingredients as well as ceramides. So it's really great for like repairing the skin barrier. And I found it to be a really nice texture for my oily skin. Like it wasn't too heavy and thick. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about lip balms that I've been using. So obviously when my lips started to get really dry on the top here, I started to use this lip sleeping mask from Apu. This is their honey and milk lip sleeping pack. I mentioned this in a favorites video, I think the month before last. And this is really good. Like you can see, I am right down to the very bottom. <laughs> Just got a tiny bit left. And I do actually think I'm going to repurchase this because I do think it's helped so much with my lips. Like they'll get a little bit dry sort of throughout the day, especially because I like to wear like matte lipsticks like I'm wearing right now. So my lips do tend to get quite dry throughout the day. Um, and I found that this is really great, at least just healing all of that by the morning. You've just got to make sure you use enough. I think with lip sleeping packs, a lot of the negative reviews come from people that just sort of go eh, like that and then put a little bit on. But you've got to really like scoop. Like the reason I've gone through it so fast is because I've actually been like scooping it out and applying like the thickest layer you can kind of tolerate on your lips and it sort of cocoons them so that it keeps your lips completely kind of protected overnight. And you wake up in the morning, you still have a little bit of like residue on your lips. It also has a very 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 subtle scents it's nothing overpowering it's very just like you know warm and comforting like honey it's actually really lovely so i think this brand is cruelty free if it's not i might have to try something else but i hope it is i'm pretty sure up here is cruelty free i can't remember i know that this was quite sort of a rambly conversational skincare video like it wasn't like me going through and vlogging my actual routine in the bathroom but I just felt like I had just a lot to kind of chat to you guys about like with my journey and it was just gonna be easy to kind of just sit down and talk to you about my experience. If you are not yet subscribed and you want to follow my Tretinoin journey then definitely subscribe. I'll be doing an update video in another three months or so and hopefully we will have some better acne results. <laughs> but once again thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!